before we get into the video, if you guys want the best quality on your screen, make sure to press the settings and turn it up to 1080p. Also, if you want some captions, if you speak a different language, go to the bottom of your screen, press this button, go over to settings, and you will see an option to press onto subtitles, go to auto translate, and you have got hundreds of languages to select from. Enjoy the video, lads. Right, lads, so EA have released some swaps two tokens milestones again as i said in my how to get and use summer swaps two tokens video i said they will be releasing milestones like they did during the first summer swaps tokens batch and they are indeed doing that last time we got four sets of these with up to eight tokens for grabs every single time lads before we get into the video make sure to drop a like and subscribe check me out on all my socials in the description as well my twitter twitch and tiktok and let's get into the video now, as I said, it's Summer Swaps Milestones. Now, it should be Summer Swaps 2 Milestones 1, but instead, I've just called it Summer Swaps again for, for some reason. I don't know why. I feel like we're going to update the name of this objective later once again, but kind of lacking a little bit because you are competing for Summer Swaps 2 tokens, and it is the first batch of many of these milestones to come. So I'm not sure why EA failed to clarify that. But anyway, it is Tuesday, New Zealand, and I believe every single Tuesday morning, New Zealand, EA release these milestones anyway, um, or Monday evening in the UK. Without further ado, boys, at least get into it. You can play up to or win up to eight squad battle games in return for four tokens and you can win eight games online in return for four tokens as well so 16 games for up to and this is a very 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 good deal from ea in my opinion for up to eight summer swaps tokens so first of all you've got win four squad battle matches on at least professional they have made this difficulty from world class to professional they did this for the very last batch of the summer swaps milestones as well so making it only professional difficulty is very nice with 11 belgian players in your squad you also get an 84 plus player pick along with your two summer swaps two tokens uh win four squad battle matches on professional with 11 uruguayan players once again getting an 84 plus player pick and two summer swaps two tokens so let's let's get into the squad battles tips tricks and squad builders that you you can use let's start with the belgian team and then we'll get into the uruguayan team so lads this is a belgian squad and then we'll head on over to the uruguayan team but this squad will cost you no more than thirty thousand coins to buy now i've gone for a 433 fourth variation for the formation so it's got the cam left wing right wing striker basically just a normal 4-3-3 except with a cam there to fit in mertens now i'll quickly run through the players and then i'll jump into the tips and then we will build you guys a uruguayan side that you can use and then we will jump into the one league objectives now left mid we've gone for yannick carrasco who along with Idris mertens is going to be your most expensive player in this team but probably your best player he's quite tall high high with four star four star some okay pay okay shooting and some very respectable dribbling 80 stamina nothing crazy but he's got that flair trait as well all in all he's going to be a nice card especially to cut inside with out like from inside with from the wings is what i'm trying to say now belgian strikers is very limited so what you could do as well is you could make carrasco a left forward play him at striker on seven chemistry and then look at a new belgian at left mid like say forgan hazard for an example is always an option you could 100 do this but for the sake of a video and for the sake of you having to worry about position modifying it and it, as it is only squad battles then i don't find that necessary but if you do want to do that that's always an option but we will get into the first tip shortly which is going to kind of eliminate the purpose of doing that because spoiler alert you can sub on whichever players you want therefore there's not too much of a point going through the hassle of position modifying etc but the only good belgian striker is a reggie at striker doku is a solid right wing he's got some great agility of 95 and some good pace four star skill moves as well our central cam is a dries mertens with our two center mids being a mangala and nan golan now our left back is very 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 average being a Bolin goalie who does play for Celtic two center backs is Vertonghen and Denea Denea who is going to be very very good in game Anthony Dialberto is the highest pace 
Belgian right back as well. I was trying to say Belgian, I was going to say Belgian right back, but I think there might be some bronze ones that might be a little bit faster, but I'd rather a silver bronze uh, or a silver right back with 81 pace than a bronze one with 85. So you're just going to have to settle for him unless you were to buy, maybe go a free back formation is the only way you'll have to choose for someone else. If you look at his price, he is, you know, 2.3k. If it is possible, try pick one that's already got a chemistry style on him because that will save you some more coins down the line. And in net, we have gone for Simon Mignolet, six foot four, saves with feet. Why not? He'll just do the job. This is your full Belgian team. Now, tip number one is going to be the bench. Lads, make sure you get the bench going, okay, boys? And this goes for both teams. You can have up to three super subs every single match. So make sure you get some attacker super subs and maybe a midfielder super sub on your bench, all right, lads? Reminder, that's why I said there's no point switching them around, etc., because you could just pause it straight away and I could sub on my Moments R9 at Striker. I could sub on my Barella in the midfield and I'll probably maybe want a defender sub like my team of year, Marquinhos, that I can go ahead and just sub on. Happy days. So make sure you get your best players on the bench for tip number one. Now tip number two, we're going to head on over to the footbin view here. Tip number two is going to be chemistry styles and the player we're going to use for an example today is going to be Doku. Now shout out to footbin. I'm not sponsored by these guys or anything like that simply just using footbin as an example but what we're going to do is we're going to look over to the right side of your screen now as you can see he's a 77 rated right wing but what we want to do is scroll down a little bit and you can see all of the chemistry styles what you want to do start with a basic because every single card starts with a basic chemistry style assuming they're on full chemistry along with your squad being on full chemistry he's going to get a plus three pace plus one shooting plus four passing plus five dribbling and plus three physical what you're going to want to do is put some chem styles on him and try change and bump this rating up as high as possible so he's an 81 rated left wing let's see if we can beat that a sniper gives him a downgrade a finisher gives him a plus one a dead eye remains as a plus one a hawk that's all the same a marksman's a plus one so it looks like a finisher is going to be the way to go with a basic he is an 80.6 rated card and with a finisher he is an 81.6 so he gets a plus one upgrade in game a finisher giving him plus nine shooting and plus eight dribbling meaning he's going to have 82 finishing in game 83 long shots 99 agility and 99 in game dribbling so basically lads go ahead and get some chemistry styles applied and that goes for your whole squad as well get those chemistry styles on your players you can search your club for the chem styles and you can just see i've got 100 148. I would avoid using Hunters and Shadows because they're quite expensive, but all the other chemistry styles you may as well use. I've got 12 Snipers, 7 Finishers, so I'll probably chuck a Finisher on Doku, maybe a Finisher on Origi, although he's probably going to be getting subbed off anyway, but just for the sake of the video. For Midfielders, I might want to chuck some Engines, some Guardians or Backbones on the defense, and it just gives them that little boost in game, especially considering you're only allowed 3 subs. That means you're going to have another 7 players obviously not counting the keeper on the pitch you're gonna have seven outfield players after making your free subs so with those seven outfield players having that chemistry boost can be quite important now this is a uruguayan team and we'll get into tip number three tip one being the bench tip two being the chemistry styles i'm gonna go over this uruguayan team this one will cost you no more than twenty-five thousand coins now it is a lot more of an average team because uruguay especially their right back left back and their right mid they are lacking in those positions quite a bit but let's quickly just go through it left striker is Jonathan Rodriguez along with Darwin Nunes up top Lozano the Uruguayan Lozano being Brian Lozano 75 rated at left mid Valverde being our best player and Ben Tancur are running the midfield with Tabo being our right mid the only other right mid that is better than this card or higher rated is a gold card and he's got like 77 pace but I want pace on the wings personally so I'm going to downgrade the rating and the shooting stat a little bit and change that for some pace therefore I think Christian Tabo is a better option left back only 82 pace is your highest but it is Matthias 
Vina. I think it's Ronald Arejo. Is that how you pronounce it? I probably completely butchered that. But 77 pace, and he'll do the job. He's an absolute monster. Now, the right center back is the second fastest Uruguayan center back behind big old Ronald over here. Now, Sebastian Kakade. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I've got to watch that one as well, aren't I? Let's just call him Sebastian, all right? Medium high. He's got some okay pace, okay defending. Sure, he's a silver, but close enough to a gold. Now, Suarez at right back, 73 paces lacking. I think this is the second fastest Uruguayan right back, the second being 74 pace. So once again, it is lacking a little bit. In net, we have gone for Mazalera as well, the highest rated Uruguayan goalkeeper. Rushes out of goal in six foot three, he will do the job. The exact same thing goes for when I built the Belgium squad, make sure to keep use of your free super subs. In fact, I would sub on, probably this time round, I would sub on a wide player, like a winger, probably a striker, and I actually think the midfield is respectable. You know, Valverde and Ben Tanker as a midfield two can work. I think you're probably missing even a fullback. So if you've got a fullback super sub, I'd probably prioritize that over a midfielder super sub for the Uruguayan team. For example, I've got Cancelo, which he can play in a midfield or fullback, so it's perfect. But I could put on Cancelo here, sub on my R9 for Darwin Nunes, and then sub on my Gareth Bale at right mid. That right side is already looking a whole lot healthier here. So once again, make sure to get the chemistry styles on the rest of your team and make sure to keep use of your free super subs. Now, the third and final tip, which goes for both the Belgian and the Uruguayan squad, is going to be a squad battles tip and how you can beat the squad battles and just keep playing really poor teams and keep refreshing to play those poor teams. So as you can see, whilst we wait for this to load, you're given four teams every single batch. Often EA give you two good ones, sometimes three good ones, but usually it's two really good ones, one average one, and usually you'll get a below average one that's beatable. Now, this is only having to be on professional difficulty used to be on world class but I guess as the game goes on EA don't mind as much therefore it is only professional difficulty which is very nice now a 195 rated squad is one of the options a 195 look we're not really going to want to play this because this is a very nice team in fact the team's name is you lost so it's not a great start it's not a good sign the next one is 81 chemistry and 88 rating definitely a whole lot more beatable especially with the defense in the left hand side of the midfield but you'd still probably rather not play it. Now as you can see a 68 rating with 63 chemistry this is going to be a gold mine this is what you're going to want to play so you'll go ahead select professional play this match and after that match you will have the option to refresh. Now, as you can see, it's not giving me the option to refresh right now. Usually down the bottom, and I'll circle usually where it will give you the option to be able to refresh your squad battles. There it would be a square option that will say update opponents. But once I've not even played a match from this whole thing, I do not have the option yet. But if I was to go ahead and play this match, then after this, I'd be able to refresh it and basically just keep playing the poor team every single time and keep farming against 68 rated squads with 60 chemistry. I know I do get a few questions about this as well, so I will circle it, but the 0 out of 40 matches played, if you do go over that match limit, do not worry, it will still count towards your squad battles, or towards your objectives, sorry, so it will all still count towards your objectives, the only thing it means is it will stop counting towards your overall squad battles rank, and you will stop getting points for completing that said game. Now moving on to the online ones, now the online ones, it's a little bit more tough for me, because I cannot tell you guys how to get first owner players, but none of least I'll go through a method that can get you some first owner players. Now, win four matches with at least eight first own German players, and win uh, win four matches with at least eight first own Dutch players, so players from Netherlands in the foot friendly One Nation. Now, it used to be One League, and EA have switched this up to One Nation, so if you want to go and back out of this, go over to Play, go on over to Friendlies, go over to Play Online, and it is a new mode there called One Nation. Now, have they put a game limit on it, or have they learned because we used to have a game limit on these. They've given us a game limit per day, which is a little bit annoying. But as you can see with the requirements, at most one nation. So you have to have a full nation of a squad. Um, in fact, the, the fact I've made this a full max one nation, hopefully that means just for the starting 11 and you can have any bench you want. Because if so, then that's respectable. Now the rules as well, if I remove my webcam, the rules is first two, which means whoever scores first, the match will end. All right, So it's going to be very quick 
and rapid fire games. You've only got four matches a day for the next 14 days. And if you do 14 times four, I believe that is 56. That was on the spot, so hopefully it is 56. You've got 56 attempts and you have to win eight games. Obviously four with a German team and four with a Dutch team. Now to, to get first owner players, let me put my webcam back on here. So what you have to do is you have to search your clubs for a full Dutch side or as much German and Dutch players as you possibly can. Now these are all of my German players and as you can see they are all first owner. So basically first owner means players that you are the first owner of. If you see just below my webcam it says brought for and it will say first owner. Now how do you get first owner cards? First owner cards are players you have either packed or players that you have completed SBCs or objectives. Quite self explanatory. Cards that you yourself are the first owner of, alright? So if you buy a card on the market, obviously you're not the first owner because someone would have had to list them beforehand. Now the thing is, I've got only seven German players, right? And we are in a problem, we're in a, we've got a little bit of a problem here because we need at least eight first owner German players. So what would I do if you're in a similar position as myself? If you're missing a first owner German player, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go over to the squad at Builder Challenges. Obviously you could open some packs with some coins, like a 7.5 5k pack and hope that there's a German card in there. I'm not sure on how much coins you have got but that is always one way of doing it although I don't recommend it because you could get unlucky, not hit one, you've lost your coins and you still have no German player. Um, but what you want to do is head on over to the live or footies, sorry head on over to footies and then you will see under I believe it is a common gold triple upgrades and you only have to trade six bronze players, you get three gold common players in return so make sure as a very last resort you you empty all of your bronze players into this, open the common gold triple upgrade, and hopefully, just hopefully, you can hit a German or a Dutch first owner player that way. And obviously the exact same thing goes for the Dutch as well. Now they do not clarify, they did not clarify under the requirements if you're allowed to have a bench, but going off of one league, like a bench of your of your wish, whichever bench you want, but going off of the one league rules, you had to have the bench specific to the same league or nation. So if you had a full starting 11 Premier League team, you need at least eight first owner players in that starting 11. You can buy three other positions, but you had to have a full prem bench. I'd assume it goes the same for this. You just obviously have to test that out so you may have to have a full German bench if so then you can simply just buy some German cards like some German bronze cards for 200 coins the, the subs will probably be unused anyway because it's the, the game mode is first two so you probably won't even have a chance to actually get your subs in because nine times out of ten majority of the time uh, the first two game mode it's going to take you maybe like two or three minutes a game so boys that will be me now for the objectives overview the win four with Belgian and Uruguayans on professional difficulty make sure you can build up those teams you could use your own team or you could build a team uh, of the teams and copy the teams that I made for you uh, what you want to do first of all get the bench players in get the chemistry styles on and keep refreshing those squad battle games to keep playing those poor teams on professional because obviously playing a team that's 68 rated will be a whole lot easier than playing a team that is 90 rated for the one nation Germany and one nation Netherlands you want to head on over to the friendly online or well, online friendly one nation I should say and to get some first owner players if you are missing them you can work at those common gold triple upgrades where you can trade six bronze players and you just got to hope that you can get some first owner players that way or you just got to wait it out until the, this week's division rivals rewards and hope you've got enough time you've got 56 attempts to get eight wins so if you can try aim for maybe even two every single day which means it will only take you four days to get both of these german and dutch uh, one league or one nation I keep saying one league these one nation objectives done There's no necessary easy tip to give you for these ones Except for just keep grinding the game to try and get these good high tier first owner players And if it does come to it, then you can always go ahead and do the common gold upgrades under the SBC footies section Much love lads any questions make sure to let me know and I'll see you boys in the next video